Bullish or bearish, you understand? It's not about the market being bullish or bearish, it's about whether anybody's trying to trade that bullish or bearish marketplace. So the market makers couldn't really care less. They're obviously aware of the fact that they want to try and figure this out, but it's like a bookmaker, a bookmaker in a horse race. If horse one is quite clearly a grade one horse, right? Horse one's quite clearly a grade horse. So this horse here is a grade one horse, and horse two is maybe a is maybe a class three horse. Well, of course, the market, the bookmaker will look at this race and say, "Wait a second, I'm going to I'm going to put this horse in at uh, at uh, one point five, which is uh, which is two to one on odds." Okay, so for for the Americans, it's going to be slightly different, zero point five. So this is in terms of odds, this is one to two. So the market maker is going to put this at one to two, and he's going to put this horse for argument's sake at uh, at three to one, right? So he's going to give three to one odds on this horse. So four point zero for uh, for British uh, for British odds, four point zero. But the market maker is about pricing up the market and seeing if they've got the pricing right. Because what happens if everybody starts backing this horse at four point zero? Everybody starts backing this horse at four point zero, including the guy that owns this horse. So everybody starts backing this horse at 4.0. Well, it's still a class three horse against a class one horse. It still shouldn't by rights have any chance. But obviously if the market maker's taking on a huge liability on this 4.0, the market maker's gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna drop the odds on this to 3.0. And he's gonna improve the odds on this to say 1.8. Because obviously nobody's backed it at 1.5. The market maker is potentially going to make a huge profit if the class one horse wins, but the market maker will have a huge loss if the class three horse wins. So even though he knows what the class is, if nobody's backing it, he's got to adjust his book to try and make this, make this trade work, right? So the market maker is in a loss leader just now. So the market maker needs to encourage people to back into this horse here. Needs to. Fortunately, the market maker always builds an overrun of maybe 20% on these trades. So the market maker's got about a 20% wiggle room. Anybody that knows the market maker's book, it's about an average of uh, it's about an average of 20%. Is the mark is a bookmaker's book just now is about 20% overround. So um, they've got about a 20% market average. That's why if the price ever drops by more than 20%, the market maker's in trouble. The bookmakers. Are in trouble. So if this odd goes from, for example, 4.0 to 3.0, you know the bookmaker is really in trouble. Well, when I did my example, I did it in purpose to make it 3.0 because the bookmaker is in trouble here. The bookmaker is in trouble. So when we understand that, that kind of makes perhaps a little bit of sense. You know, the market makers aren't necessarily about trading the value because they're only going to trade the value if anybody else is trading the value, right? If nobody trades the value, market makers got to adjust their book. And at the moment, the value might be bearish, but if nobody's selling it, market maker has to stay bullish, right? So at the moment, the market maker is still bullish. Um, they managed to get a few sellers, which I thought was going to turn the market in just here. They got a few sellers here on that 1400 hours candle there. Um, they added, they added some offers to create that condition. But remember, the market maker is still bullish, so at the moment they are still looking to try and take the market up just now. So, yeah, they're doing a good job, a very good job. And this became a market maker buy trade here. They started to put back in to play here, adding some bids behind the market to drive the price back up again. And obviously, at the moment, they're just waiting the. I thought it was going to go bearish here, <clears throat> but it didn't. So we're still market maker bullish at the moment and uh, still looking at still even more higher prices.
Now, they're holding off on this at the moment. They're actually adding offers on these top edges just now, guys. So this is still an aggregation at the top edge. They haven't gone bearish, so it's not an accumulation short. It is an aggregation up here at the moment at the top edges. They haven't changed that storyline. So the bracket just now is 1809s to 5.5s, 9s to 5.5s just now. Market makers still have a, a bullish bias. They are still, at the moment, adding offers at the top edges and at the bottom edges. So at the moment, they are still adding offers, and they're trying to get a sense of how many people are buying into this. And I think if the market makers don't find any buyers, I think they'll flip their bias to bearish. Now remember, it's in response to that buying and selling that the market maker will start building a bullish or bearish picture. It's not necessarily about value. It's not necessarily about value. Let's see what they're going to do here. Okay, they are still adding offers at the moment. Now this is this is what happened to them over here. They added offers here, and they got trapped because a commercial crossed the spread and bid against them. So that became an aggregation that they needed to mitigate. So they are still adding offers here. So this is one that they might get trapped on. Nope, they've been able to push the price back down again. They are still aggregating this higher price. So they are still in an aggregation, guys, on this space. If I see them going net short, They normally don't go net short whilst the market's at a top edge. They normally go net short when the markets came off the highs. Why? Because they start recognizing the commercial crossing the spreads. Do you understand? What do, what do I mean by that? Well, let's go back to this, uh, this idea, the very, very simple idea that the market maker is watching for commercial activity. As a price rallies and the price falls, there may well always be commercial activity here. There's a seller coming in. As the price rallies, there may well be another commercial seller coming in. It doesn't mean the market's going net short, right? It doesn't mean the market's getting short sold. But obviously what happens from that commercial sell is pretty obvious. If the price drops and then the price rallies and the commercial crosses in here, then of course that's definitely now bearish. The commercials are now crossing the spread. What will happen at that stage is the market maker will go short. When they see a commercial crossing a spread, the market maker will go short here. Okay, so what they'll try and do is they'll go short here, maybe add a few bids to see if they can get any buyers because now the market maker may want to do what? Accumulate shorts. So they may well aggregate into this price here. They may well aggregate this. They may well aggregate this. They then see a seller in this area here. They may well try and accumulate this to get net shorts, okay? And then, of course, what's going to happen is that if they're accumulating that, they'll then probably withdraw liquidity below the markets, and the price then sells away from those accumulations. That's the market maker accumulation. This is the commercial accumulation here. That's the commercial accumulation. This is the market maker accumulation. How do we see this? A lot of the times, this will be that price that simply just gets capped at one single price. You'll see a liquidity line. Buyers come in, nothing, buyers come in, nothing, buyers come in. They get stuck at a single price. It doesn't go anywhere. The price has only one room to go, and that is to the sell side. So the market makers have taken this market offered, guys. Um, they've taken it offered on the big down candle. Okay, so the market makers went offered on that big down candle. So they went offered on that big down candle there. So the market makers have now seen enough commercial selling at lower prices. The market makers have gone offered for the time being. Okay, they've gone offered for the time being. So that's why that line is now in place. Exactly the same as what happened here. So if the market makers can do it, they'd love to spoof the top edges. Why? Because obviously if they can spoof the top edge, they could get an accumulation of short positions against that commercial seller that came in at lower prices. Commercial's not bothered, the commercial will join them. So the market maker would love to take the price up now. 
absolutely love to take the price up. Try and get the buyers trapped. If they can't 